present a focus spotlight. Live from Las Vegas at VM World 2011, host John Furrier and Dave Valente illuminating cloud conversions with support from HP Cloud System, the most complete integrated platform for building and managing clouds. Okay, we're back at VMworld 2011. I'm John Furry, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm here with my co-host with this panel. I'm Alex Williams, editor of SiliconAngle. Okay, and our guests, and we have uh, some guests today. We have, uh, on the end, we have Steve Deesh of uh, HP and Erica Brescia, CEO of uh, Binami. Hi. So this panel is about cloud, hybrid cloud, the realities of cloud. So Steve, you've been on theCUBE before. You're, you know the drill. So we'll start off with you, cloud. What is the cloud? Where are we in the cloud? And, and mark, the, mark uh, a point in time and give us an update on where you think we are. Hype, how we're coming with the product side, you guys are actually delivering. Give us a sense of the cloud definition and, and where, you, where we're at. Well, well you know, I, I think we're beyond, I, I don't even want to use the word hype anymore. I, I think the cloud's a reality, but it's a reality that may be not as real as people think it is. Um, the cloud is, a, and I think you've heard from some of my colleagues, that the cloud's a journey, it's a destination to get there, and, and people need to take a stepwise pragmatic approach. They're not losing focus on what they're trying to accomplish. So you see at this show, you see at every trade show today, and we're guilty inside the industry of hyping the technology without really stepping back and saying, what am I trying to accomplish from a business perspective? And at the end of the day, somebody said it really good yesterday. They said, at the end of the day, I'm not even going to call this cloud. Wouldn't somebody just want a real agile, efficient, flexible environment and call, and call whatever you want? That's what people at the end of the day are trying to do and throw in some self-service and charge back and internet technology and resource pools. That's really where we're going. If you want to call it a cloud, we'll call it a cloud. And I think people are actually moving there quite fast, but everybody's going to be on a different maturity stage, let's call it. So is it, do you find it's just pay as you go, robust, agile infrastructure? If you want to call it that, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Amazon really kind of confuses the model. We heard from Archie Reed from HP who just said, you know, really no, none of the customers he talks to wants to put anything in the public cloud. Um, and that was his kind of sound bite, but in reality, that's somewhat true. Public cloud is dangerous when you talk about data. Um, what, what you, how do you feel about that comment? Um, I'm not sure I'd be as, as harsh in that response. I think there's a lot of use cases and workloads that will go to the public cloud. Um, but you know, the way I look at it right now is, the first step around moving to the cloud is standardization and consolidation of your environment, cost, ability to move workloads. You're going to virtualize and automate, and then you're going to be ready for a paradigm shift. You'll move to private cloud, non-production workloads, and then you might be ready. You might be mature, you've got compliance worked out, you've got non-mission critical apps, you'll put it in the cloud and you'll, you'll have a, a hybrid environment. But, you know, and look, some things will never go public. It's just a fact. Some people say are saying um, publicly and, and privately that HP really doesn't have a cloud strategy, um, and um, you guys, you know, we met Carnegie Mellon on last year and, and Dallas Cowboys talking about how they got a cloud up in, in two seconds, um, you know, and, and they're saying that because you know you join OpenStack, which kind of looks like a groping maneuver, um, and so just clarify the fact that HP's in the cloud business, and you guys been in the data center business, you've been in the infrastructure business, I mean, with real products, so I mean. What's your take? Yeah, well, let what do you me say to those make people? a very blatant statement, very blunt, so there's no confusion. HP is in the cloud. We've been in the cloud. If, if you talk about the cloud in the terms I mentioned previously, of creating agile, flexible resource pools, knowing how to create mission critical environments for the largest and the smallest companies on the planet, we know how to do that. We're the largest IT company on the planet. We have a, the broadest and deepest portfolio, and we're in. We're in from building clouds, private, public, from delivering cloud services, from helping from transformational services across the board. Um, we're, we're, I, I, I would point blank say we're all in. Okay, Alex, what are you seeing out there as you're as you're scouring the landscape for stories with SiliconAngle.com? Well, I was gonna, you know, I, I was, I, I think of it this way. I, I think of the cloud. You know, what is the cloud? You know, I think of like, what, what am I trying to achieve? What are, what are the people I know? What are they trying to achieve? You know, people are trying to create things, right? They're consuming things, they're expressing themselves, and they want to use it for work, to, to get, you know, to get all their, to get their work done. And it just, from my perspective, it seems like that's the finish line, and we're seeing all kinds of ways that people are trying to get there. You know, so there's all kinds of, there's a million different kinds of approaches. And, and I think that's, you know, I, I think what, Part of what we're what we're seeing here is just such a major disruption that there is a lot of confusion about exactly what it is because well, there are so many different choices and there's so many different. Well, there's uh, confusion about not only that. There's confusion around 
who has what and what is what, right? So, I'll give you an example, Cloud Foundry uh, has got a lot of buzz. I mean, on our, on our quote, you know, media that, you know, tool we use to track stories and intelligence, you know, Cloud Foundry is causing a lot of buzz. Why? Because VMware is launching Cloud Foundry. You know, it's just getting rolling. Yeah, so HP has been delivering some cloud for many long, you know, many, many years now, yeah. if you want to call it you yeah. know, cloud. So that's why I asked you the definition, because what is cloud? Well, I'm curious, Erica, well, how do you see it? Because you guys provide like an app store for the cloud, and you work pretty closely with Amazon Web Services. What it, how do you guys define it? We believe, I think you, you defined it really well. We've always seen the cloud, uh, cloud being about automation. We think it's automation and that leads to agility and that's what's most important in the cloud. And um, obviously I have a very application specific focus and approach to the cloud, but we've been working with a lot of the leading open source companies, um, Alfresco and Sugar CRM to name a few, and talking about their cloud strategies for several years now. And we're just finally see everything coming together and the vendors understanding that, yes, they really need to have a plan here and it might require some product changes and some pricing changes and some, some sales model changes and, and they're really starting to, to work on those and implement them. So the economics are driving <coughs> that with the, with the automation, you're driving more economics. If your customers want to run your apps in the cloud, you better have an answer to how they can do that or you're going to yeah. be in big trouble. Yeah, and they need networks to run it over, which is, you know, we had talked to you Mike Bannock at HP. Yeah, you know, what's, you know what's interesting, following up on Eric's comments, is the one thing that customers and clients are tending not to look at, even before they get to deciding where they're going to place their workloads, Cloud works for you as a tool if you've decided to create an efficient business model mm -hmm. with standardized business processes, yep. efficiency in your organization, and then you worry about the technology. And uh, we're seeing a lot of clients that may be rushing into decisions about deploying technology without stepping back mm -hmm. and taking those decisions or plotting that path, pragmatic path, and they run into a lot of problems. And then they're going to have to back up Lessons learned, but by all means, backing up. To we, just, we just heard from a CIO who basically just said that. He said most, the biggest fail point for cloud is jumping in without a plan. And just they think it's it's easy, because they, they hear about the stories about credit cards on, on Amazon and whatnot. But you know, to me, the question is, where is, it's an extension of your data center, right? So like, remember client server, and we talked with Siki Gunta from CSC, big partner of you guys, and she said, client server, it was million, zillion dollar deals 24, 36 months rollouts. Everyone, big gravy train. Cloud is a little bit different. I mean, and what's your take on that, Steve? I mean, what are you seeing for deployments in terms of deployment ranges, how fast are clouds rolling yeah. out? So, so assuming that somebody has a well thought out plan, which is important, and you should do that upfront thinking as an executive team, not just your CIO, but your lines of business, your marketing, or the people that are actually going to consume the service, including your CFO who has to be convinced. Our guidance to our customers is to take that pragmatic approach to it and then deploy non-production first into a carved out, well-defined set of workloads. The biggest failure other than that upfront plotting is that customers try to do too much too fast by bringing not only those new workloads but legacy workloads over and it turns into an 18 to 24 month rigmarole that then you have to go back to the CFO and say, well, you know what, we're going to have to reboot here and start over. Well-defined, prove that the cloud is beneficial from a financial and an agility perspective to your CFO and your organization, then move forward. You know, I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, Erica, too, from your, uh, you know, from your experiences with the software companies, what they're saying about it. Are they, how are they compared to a year ago? Are they, are they confused as they were a year ago? Are they starting to see some clarity? Do you have some examples of that? Uh, they're absolutely not as confused as they were a year ago. I mean, most of the companies that we work with now have a very clear plan, even if they haven't started executing on that. Um, I think one really good example is Alfresco. They launched a new team edition product, and they came to us before launching it and said, look, people are either going to have the option of downloading it or deploying it to the cloud with Bitnami. We want to have an extremely simple process. We need to reach out to a new market, and we want people to be able to come to us with a credit card and spend a few hundred bucks a month and get a pretty enterprise um, content management system. So that's a good example of how companies are actually even using the cloud and <clears throat> the less or the frictionless sales model of the public cloud and, and designing new products and reaching new markets that way. And so how are service providers reacting from what you're seeing? <clears throat> Um, I think the service providers and the solutions providers are still figuring it out. They're still figuring it out how to redefine their business models around the cloud. They have a lot of clients trying to pull them in that direction and they're trying to figure out exactly 
how they're going to be able to sustain and build their businesses that way. Um, a few have the right idea, but I think it's still early. Question for you, Steve, is um, um, on that note, apps are driving everything, you know, but yet you need the infrastructure to run it. Ladies and gentlemen, the hangar is now closed. <laughs> Please make your way to the nearest exit. Thank you. So on the cloud rollouts, how much are apps driving decision making on how to do cloud? Are you seeing, can you comment on that at all? Um, well, at the end of the day, the cloud is, as, a, as an IT delivery vehicle, it's all about the service of the app. People seem to, a lot of people seem to be fixated on infrastructure, um, which is okay, you want an efficient infrastructure, but at the end of the day, you're delivering a service or an application. So you should be planning from a workload application perspective when you deploy your infrastructure. But a lot of people, at least in the immature state we are, are leading with an infrastructure as a service private cloud that delivers an efficient dev test environment is a real simple example. Actually, we've seen about 60% of initial private clouds be non-production dev test environments, but it's with all the thinking of the next step after they prove out the, R the initial ROI and the agility test is to move to internal software as a service. So we've seen the collision between big data and cloud happening, right? And so, you know, that's driving a lot of these new applications, especially mobility, uh, whether it's, you know, small data or big data. Um, what is, you guys bought Vertica. Can you comment about what's going on with Vertica and how that implements into your cloud strategy? Uh, you know, we can't comment on it too much at this point, um, but obviously the ability to utilize um, both, you know, Vertica and I can't comment on autonomy either, but both play into the whole idea of big data, unstructured data, and the ability for a business to, to leverage that data. And having that available in a private environment or actually as a service at some point in the future is monumental for companies. You know, you can think about not only big companies, but think about the enablement of Imagine the number of business models that can be created because companies have access to that type of powerful tool. Hey John, if you don't mind, I'd like to make a comment on sure. Steve's last statement about how people are starting with dev and test and, then, and now looking at apps. We're seeing a lot of that in the last six months on an almost daily basis. Now I get an email from cloud providers or cloud platform providers who are looking for app stores now. So they started out playing around in the dev and test space and now they want an app library and an easy self-service system for end users to be able so to use. So they're crossing over. Yeah, so they're looking for us to provide, you know, port our Bitnami cloud hosting product which was initially developed for the public cloud to their private cloud platform so that they can get apps easily deployed internally. So final question here, we're getting that under time <coughs> pressure here for both uh, Steve and Erica and Alex. Just predict next year, what uh, uh, next year VMworld rolling the cube, what's going to happen, uh, what's going to happen this year? In, in the cloud business, not necessarily <laughs> a macro not HP else. sense, we, we'll watch that too, but um, <laughs> Just in, in the business, what are you going to see evolve? Next VM world with VMware and, and the ecosystem and everything else. I, I honestly think that 2012 will define this market. I think you'll see an emergence of winners and losers. Um, there's a, an, a massive, you, we got to remember as we move through 2012, the industry needs to remember, including HP, what problem are we trying to solve here? Coming up with great whiz bang technology? Or is there a business problem we're trying to solve via technology? And we're not doing ourselves a favor with this fragmented approach that we have in the industry right now where we're asking customers to bring together the components and perpetuate problems that already exist, I predict that you'll see a consolidation where there will be a, a considerable number of winners that are trying to address that fragmentation and provide more of an integrated approach to customers as we go forward. Erica? That's tough. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth but made them sound much better than I would on, have. You got to get, get something out there. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, I, c consolidation, absolutely. I think that's probably almost a broken record thing at this point because everyone's talking about it. Uh, from my perspective, I think um, it's going to be about applications and real deployments and, and making it easier for not just dev and test, but for end users to actually get their, their applications up and running more quickly. And I think the, the focus is definitely moving up the stack from the infrastructure level. Alex, and you want to take a stab? Yeah, well, I, you know, my big thing right now is an interest in uh, what's happening in the storage space. And I think that's going to start to have some effect on the types of services that we see out there. I think there'll be an extension of those of services that will provide for more, you know, apps for more data, and that's going to be. I think there's going to be some real uh, groundbreaking stuff in that area. 
Well, I'll take a stab and just say I think it's going to be a year of delivery. Put the meat on the bone, as we say, sizzle and steak. And I think we'll see a lot more product come out. And uh, the winners will be defined by the solutions that they put out. So, Steve, Erica, Alex, thanks so much for this panel. Appreciate it. And then Cloud. And uh, that's it for the Cloud panel. And we'll be right back.